awesome. So yeah, great performance Thank in the you. film. I mean, just really brilliant. I, I was saying to uh, Corey, I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s right. in a suburb of Massachusetts. You right. know? Okay. But to me and all of my white friends, right. the music of NWA was as important to us as it was to kids growing up in South Central at that time. Oh. Like that music was so important to my growing up and to see it displayed in the film the way it was, just with a lot of respect and honor, it's just, it's just great. Right, right, right. I have to like tip my hat to Gary because it's so important to hit the mark with this movie because they have so many ways to get it wrong. And they have so many eyes. Like, Easy is one of the few people who's not here, you know? <laughs> they have so many people who live this, you know? So many people who this really matters to. And it's important for everybody to come out and check it out, you know? Because just like you said, you grew up in, in Massachusetts and you're in the suburbs and, you know, it. even though it kind of went viral and it wasn't that public that everybody knew about it it was like an unspoken code like well that's what was cool about it too it wasn't like twitter and all this and right. you know, youtube it was, it was real, like, old school it was like hey i heard i got this tape i made a copy you right know? Like, exactly like in your head, locker head, yeah. Like, yeah it was like jamming. underground and it right. was young and it was Right. You know, yeah. They were talking about something right. that maybe I didn't even understand, but I, I, I understood it was important. Right, right. And the great thing about that is that it's hard to see somebody's opinion if you don't understand their circumstance. Right. You know, and That's very this true. really lets people see the why. You know, like, where does this stuff come from? And why is it coming out like this, you know? And they have so many things that are still relevant to this day that people don't want to get uncomfortable and talk about. But we have to get uncomfortable as a people, come out of our comfort zone and just hear each other out, you know, and start making some decisions as humans instead of this race or that race or this class, or you know? And like the music did that 20 years ago. Exactly. The film can do that now. Exactly. And the great part about that is, like, when I saw N.W.A., I saw superheroes, yeah. you know? And now that I'm being able to recreate that, to know that I could be a child superhero, or even more so just spark the mind of a child who has some friends, who have some talent, who could be like, hey, we could change our whole situation with this. Easy, he's your Batman. Exactly. He's your Batman. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You really want to like, change the situation and like, he really, he changed my life. Well, let me he's ask you this. Here, when when you, you get know? cast in this role, yeah. I mean, an iconic figure yeah. in music, uh, who's no longer with us. Right. How do you wrap your head around that? How do you begin the process of researching his life to give an authentic performance that's respectable to his life and career and legacy on right. film? Right, well, what I did was, of course, reached out to every outlet I could to get some type of information about him, whether it be video or interviewing somebody or things like that. But I think the most important thing was not to demonize him for one, right. and to humanize him second thing. And the way I did that was to take all this information that I got and create an opinion about it. Mm. If I were easy in this situation, do I hear Cube out when you're in high school and you're trying to tell me about a contract? But if there was no money, this would never be... I created this whole situation. You know what I mean? It was, it was things like that that I had to, you know, let go in my head. And it was an opinion <laughs> that you had to create with a 10-year span. Right. You know what I mean? And as you go on, it's... You know, because the movie's not shot in order, so it's important to know these things right. before you get started. But as you do get started and you start to kind of get the swing of things, it's easier to kind of get in that groove where you have that opinion, where you can just react naturally and really live in the moment, you know? And F. Gary Gray, he just did such a great job of constructing it chronologically to make us have a real friendship, you know, making us go through all these boot camps together and do all this together and then, you know... Early in the shoot, Dre brother, you know, dies, and we all are holding each other as men, you know, and, and, and letting out tears, and you know what I mean? And it binds us for real. 
and then Cube leaves the group, you know what I mean? And now he's doing scenes by himself and we're without him and it's like, it feels different, you know? And you can feel it and it, it just, it, it translates on screen so well. It really does. Yeah. With Easy being the only member that's not here with us. Right. So Ice Cube, obviously a producer, his right. son's playing himself in the right. movie, he's on set. Uh, I know Dre was on set at times. Did you feel an added responsibility to really tell easy story because there's no one else there to really protect his side of things? Absolutely. In some ways, and I don't want to say it's a rewriting of history, right. but it, it's certainly history from Cuban Dre's point of view to some degree. Did you feel as an actor playing that role of responsibility to, to the character to make sure that his story is told Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, because, well, as did everyone. Mm. I don't want to, you know, make it seem like, you know, Cube or Dre was like, hey, lean more towards my side of the story. Right. You know, but naturally, by him not being able to speak up for himself, I had to, you know, make it hit. And I think the main thing I thought through all of that was that I'm not the villain. This isn't on purpose. There is a bit of fear here where I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to try something to make all our situations better. Because it's better than sleeping on your auntie couch, <laughs> you know? And there were a lot of layers, you know, that go untold because Easy e is such a character to some people, mm -hmm. it's such larger than life that you forget that he puts his pants on in the morning. You know, and that he has a lot of feelings about what happens. And I can't I can't say it enough. Like, Gary really made me feel safe, mm. you know. And the rest of the guys in NWA really let me know what kind of guy he was as, as Eric. You know, right. on that bus when they were traveling for days and days and his hair's all over his head. You know, I know all these stories about how he supported them emotionally and who he was as a person and how big his spirit was, you know? And those were just things that, that I had to make come to life without the writing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's really amaz amazing performance. And, and Easy does not come off like the villain at all, nor does right. Jerry in, right. in, in many ways. Right. Suge Knight comes off a little bit. I mean, <laughs> see, he's he almost, might be a little pushy. He, he's like the shark from Jaws. I mean, right. you see him come in the first scene, kind of lingering around in the background. It's like seeing the fin, you know, come up right. in the water. It's dude, like, dude. oh, I know he's dude, trouble. Dude, right. But, um, but I wanted to ask you about your feeling about that relationship between Jerry and Easy. I mean, it, it was a father-son relationship. Yes. It was a mentor relationship. Yes. Uh, and I got the feeling from the movie that even Jerry, in his own weird way, wasn't trying to do Easy wrong. And like Probably maybe Easy even got that to right. some degree. But at the same time, you did do me wrong. Right. You know? I mean, right. tell me a little bit about that relationship. It's ironic because it's a lot like me and Paul Giamatti. <laughs> not ever say he In what way? Did. That's interesting. Yeah, not, not that he ever did me wrong. No, of course not. Like, we also have some really organic moments in the, in the, in the movie because that was the day that me and Paul actually met that Easy and Jerry actually met. Oh, and, um, at the record pressing. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, it grew into a relationship that, like, after a while, like, he would, like, leave in and out of my trailer, like, don't tell the rest of the guys. You know? <laughs> like, please, don't make it a situation. You know, but... Now, now, do you think Paul was doing that as sort of an actor method -y thing, like, you know, to, or, or to create some sort of dynamic amongst all of you? you know, or? I, don't, I don't think so. And that's, that's the point that I'm making now. The fact that, I mean, he just wasn't super huge on some of the catering sometimes. And Paul's not a crazy wild eater either, but his, his thing is, I mean, and when, when in LA you have to have in and out you know? <laughs> so if ever set is close to in and out he's like, hey, you know, he sends his driver to go, you know, get in and out or whatever. And I'm like, Look out for me. You know, so after that happens one or two times, he's like, hey, kid, look, you don't have to ask this time. I, it's in and out over there. It's waiting on you in the trailer. You know what I mean? And it's just a thing that we kind of developed. But he and I sparred so much that by the time, you know, it was time to do scenes with other people and things like that, you could feel the, the, the friendship between he and I versus 
the business shit with everybody else. You know what I mean? It's perfect. But he was really it feeds out. right into it. It's perfect. Yeah, and it, it works. It really, really yeah. works. You know, and um, <laughs> it's crazy because I think with Easy and Jerry, they they had a really special thing because. I know from Easy's point of view, he didn't want to trust Jerry Heather at first, but he hit the mark so many times, you know, and they they had a thing that they really, really, really built that was really solid. You know, they made millions of dollars. They they shut the world, and Jerry really had their back. Like, when the police messed with him and, you know, all these things, like, it was probably just the money that he messed up. Everything else, when it came to the group, he rolled for them. You know, and that's 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 a big deal because Easy, I know he had some fear of being like, how am I gonna walk in there with a Jerry curl and in a dicky outfit saying, hey, let me in when I really don't know what to do, you know? And they developed something great. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just kind of fell off a little bad, yeah. you know. I also want to ask you about the scene that you have with Suge Knight in the film. Uh -huh. I mean, this is obviously. For those of us who have followed the story of NWA all, the year, all yeah. over the years, this is almost like a, an urban legend that we yeah. get to see mm -hmm. actually happen on screen. So there's mm -hmm. so much has been talked about that moment throughout right. the years. Right. What's it like to actually authentically get into that moment and live it as Easy e For me, it was when I felt like I had kind of the neighborhood beef on my shoulders. And being that the contracts weren't signed, not at that time, or if they were, they, you know, it was it was something that went on legally that that was illegal, so it still didn't hold up. Right. But in that situation, I felt like I had to bring out that, that real dark side of easy that made the whole world understand that even though this little bitty guy is in the room with these big guys it's it's a he's completely focused you know why do people love him so much why would people you know just jump behind him like that cuz people don't fight for you when you wouldn't fight for yourself you know but he stood for so much and in that moment I had to make him stand for everything because, like you said, it's an urban legend. Nobody really knows what happened. But I personally feel like everybody wanted to believe right. that Easy was a badass in that situation. <laughs> and that's what I had to go with. You know, I had to go, you know. Was it equally with... hard in the, the, the hospital scenes? You know, the, the hospital scenes were not that hard. It was actually harder to slow down because... In my past, I have so many things to cry about that I just probably didn't take the time to. And uh, it all just came flowing out in that scene. Yeah, I just like, like I said, Gary gave me that safe zone. That, you know, only him, he and I were communicating at the time, and it was so thick in there that you could like poke it. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it was. That's really, acting, man. Really That's thick. it. Yeah. You were feeling. And I felt it was so therapeutic. Like we yeah. literally did that in like three or four takes. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, uh, it's a little unfair, O'Shea, playing Q. <laughs> like, come on. I mean, did you and Corey ever kind of give him a little... Uh, you got to give him a little bit of shit, right? I mean, we give him shit. <laughs> but I, it's only because he looks exactly oh like you. That's the only reason we And again, him again shit. it gives a great performance. I mean, all you guys yeah. gave great performances. Yeah. But to, for me to see him have to go through what he went through at the chemistry read alone, was enough. Well, I think I think his dad was messing with him a little bit. No, nah, you don't think you don't think it was nah, always his Cube, job, Cube, his role. Cube, Cube actually wasn't there because he uh, he was shooting right at him. Okay. And Gary. So it wasn't a done deal that O'Shea was getting that role. No, absolutely not. He had earned. Yeah, yeah, he had to earn it. He actually was the last one to book, and it was uh, it was painstaking. Like you know, I remember one of our in and out rides. <laughs> yeah. That he was just like, damn. You know, like, it would really crush my world to see this go to somebody else. He was like, because I'm putting, I'm giving it all I got. Like, I don't know why I'm not that convincing. Like, I'm giving it all I got. And, you know, it wasn't until that 
that moment that we actually realized that we had chemistry, that we all felt confident in it, and that we can all feel like we can hit that stretch to take it home. You know, nobody ever went in there feeling like, nah, I got this, or he gonna get it just because, like, nah. It was to the point where it was like, damn, he might not get it because he looked too much like Ice Cube. Like, he's Cube son, they might not give it to him because then it's cliche. You're gonna think of all the things that's wrong. You're like, oh, man, that would be so messed up. You he's know actually in the movie twice. Who's he, that? Shay, because he's playing his dad. And then in the Friday isn't scene, he's weird? the kid in the background. Isn't that weird? I'm like... And it's weird because I'm there on the day when, like, he's there with his family. Because we would all go, like, support on our days off. You know, like, if if Shay had to shoot something without us, you know, we would go. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's hard without your people, you know? Yeah. And, um... <laughs> I just remember him, like, having that moment, like... This is me and Daryl. This is weird, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in this house with pictures of my family and I've never been in this house. This is so strange, you know what I mean? Like, he's going through the whole thing. Like, you're my mom, gross, but I like it. You know what I mean? Like, it was all so weird. That's right. All so strange. Uh, last thing I want to ask you real quick. I mean, your performance is so amazing Thank in this you. movie. Like, I'm not just blowing smoke. Thank oh, you. you know, it's really great. Legitimately great. Like, are you ready for award buzz? The season are you ready to get into the into the oscar race and because it's that good you're, you're gonna be soon thank you they're gonna be thank calling you. you man thank you man oh man thank you so much brother i appreciate it all right <laughs>